It's time for member statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm extremely pleased to share with the House today that a long-standing dairy cooperative in my riding is continuing to make immense valuable contributions to Ontario's dairy industry and supporting rural communities. Since Gay Lee was established by a small group of farmers in 1958, its membership has grown to include more than 1,300 dairy farmers who work tirelessly throughout southwestern Ontario to produce 35 per cent of Ontario's cow milk. And last week, Gay Lee Foods announced that they will be investing $140 million over four years into innovative projects that will transform the face of the Canadian dairy industry. In response to the Dairy Farmers of Ontario ingredient strategy, Gay Lee's investment is unprecedented in Canada, and it will pave the way for a nutrition and nutraceutical-grade dairy ingredients hub in Ontario. This investment means a $60 million expansion in Teeswater, a Bruce County village that will see more jobs and more prosperity because of this new venture. It also means they'll be transforming the industry into a new and creative way that will allow Gay Lee to serve the needs of people across Ontario, and they'll also become a glo global leader. I had the honour of attending the announcement last week, and Mr. Speaker, it was awesome to see the excitement for what lies ahead, not only for Gay Lee, but for the milk industry overall in Ontario. I look very much forward to watching Gay Lee continue to grow and meet the changing needs of Ontarians, and on behalf of here in Bruce, Ontario, and a person who is proud to call Teeswater home, I want to extend my sincere congratulations to Gay Lee. We'll be with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Mr. Speaker, the 435 workers at the Children's Aid Society of the Region of Peel, members of QP Local 4914, and a lot of them are with us today, have been on the picket line for nine weeks. But this strike, Speaker, isn't about wages. It's about workload. These workers care, care, care deeply about the children and the families they work with, and that's why they have been asking for a limit on the total number of cases they're expected to carry at one time. This is exactly the kind of workload cap that is already in place and working well in other comparably sized funded children aid societies, for example, like Durham Region. Why can't it happen in Peel, Speaker? Even with this employer's stubborn refusal of real workload cap, the strike could be over tomorrow. QP has proposed a reasonable compromise. Send the outstanding issues to binding arbitration and let everyone go back to work to help our kids. The only reason that it hasn't happened is because the employer is refusing. Shame. What's wrong with them, Speaker? Why are, they, why are they holding this process up? Don't they want children's aid services to get back to normal? Let's hope the Minister of Children and Youth Services is listening to this right now, Speaker. Let's hope that he picks up the phone today and asks the management team at Peel's Children's Aid to come to their senses and put these people back to work. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from the Centre. Thanks very much, Speaker. Speaker, this week is Holdemore Awareness Week, and I stand today to pay tribute to the victims of the Holdemore. This week we pay tribute to the anniversary of the famine genocide of 1932-33, known as the Holodomor. This was when Joseph Stalin closed Ukraine's borders and confiscated all grain to destroy a Ukrainian population that was opposed to his rule, a population that sought the same freedom and the same independence that the people of Ukraine are fighting for today. At the height of the Holodomor, speaker, 17 people per minute, 1,000 per hour, and 25,000 per day were dying of famine. The world was silent, and millions died as a result. My grandmother was a survivor of the Holodomor, and she lost three of her brothers to the Soviet regime. She once told me that she hoped that the victims of the Holodomor would not only be remembered, but honoured. Honoured, she said, meant not just remembering them or commemorating them, but learning from the mistakes that were made by the West and making sure that something like this never happens again. And one of the best ways is to do this is to ensure that young people here in Ontario learn about the Holodomor. And that is why I'm so proud to stand here today on behalf of members of the Ukrainian community who worked towards that goal for so long, with so many MPPs on all sides who supported this cause, and with the Premier who ensured that the whole Holodomor is in the Ontario curriculum so that every young person in Ontario can learn about the whole Holodomor. More recently, our government provided $750,000 in funding to the whole Holodomor mobile classroom, a bus that's been retrofitted and that will travel the province and educate our young people across Ontario about the whole Holodomor and the lessons of the whole Holodomor. This week, it is important that we commemorate and remember, Speaker, but that we also honour the victims of the Holodomor. Let us do as my grandmother would have asked. Let us remember the victims, let us commemorate the victims, and let us honour them.
Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Simcoe Gray. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to share with the House a very special story that involves the members of the Saga Beach Fire Department as well as a local family. Early last Friday morning, a couple from the east end of town pulled into the town's west end fire hall, knowing they wouldn't make it to the Collingwood General Marine Hospital. In Collingwood, they wouldn't make it to its delivery room. Firefighters are trained for this type of situation, and they quickly sprang into action. The two firefighters on duty, Jamie Murphy and Jason Martin, did a tremendous job. Chief Mike McWilliam told Bayshore Broadcasting that when he arrived at the hall, the baby was already born, was healthy and was crying, and the mother was smiling. This is a wonderful story that showcases the terrific skills our firefighters have. It reminds us of the very important job that these brave men and women do in our community, and we owe them our great gratitude. Often firefighters are there to help us and to support us during times of great loss. And while we are grateful for their assistance on those dark days, it was nice to see them play such a vital role at such a joyous time in this family's life. I offer my congratulations to the firefighters, the parents, and the newborn baby girl. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to speak to an issue I have brought up in this House many times, but this Liberal government refuses to address. That is the lack of supports for people suffering with mental health challenges. This is a growing concern in my riding of Lenham Fanshawe, in our neighbouring communities like Woodstock, and for thousands of people across our province. Now those lack of supports are creeping into Ontario's workplace and insurance board, workplace safety and insurance board. Simply put, the system intended to protect the workers is broken. A complaint sent to the Ombudsman has charges that workers suffering with mental health challenges are being systemically, systematically denied benefits because of discriminatory and unconstitutional practice at workplace safety and insurance boards. When someone faces a workplace-related illness or injury, his or her first thought and only thought should be receiving care not the concern regarding an uphill battle with WSIB. It's time this government gets serious about fixing issues with WSIB and help them find their way back to helping injured workers and not hurting them. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Eglinton, Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday evening, I had the opportunity to attend an evening of appreciation for Hatsola Toronto. Hatsola is a non-profit organization whose volunteer first responders provide emergency medical services to the Toronto and York region's Jewish community in partnership with EMS Toronto and York region. Hatsola is staffed entirely by volunteers. Hatsola Toronto is now celebrating 18 years of uh, service. I had the particular honour last night of attending with my friend and constituent, Haim Weinman, who has been volunteering with Hatsola since its inception in Toronto 18 years ago. I'd, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the community members who donate and volunteer for Hatsola. Hatsola was founded in 1965 in New York, where it became clear that many members of the Jewish Orthodox community had culturally specific medical needs that needed addressing. It then spread throughout the states into Toronto and York region, where it continues to provide professional first responder service to anyone who asks for it. I would like to commend Hatsola Toronto and uh, especially Haim Weinman and all the wonderful people who volunteer their time, their money, and their passion to provide first responders who needs that special care at that very important critical time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hundreds of thousands of Ontarians live with dementia, and many more are affected as caregivers care partners, and those who interact with dementia patients in the community, such as business owners. Our communities need to be dementia-ready and dementia-friendly. On Friday, our office and local community le leaders took a step into achieving this, this goal by holding a community consultation on the development of Ontario's dementia strategy. The government launched a consultation paper, an online survey, and several in-person meetings on the strategy but none were scheduled either in Cornwall or anywhere east of Kingston. Our community deserves a voice, and it came through loud and clear. Participants included people with dementia, their families who are often the primary or sole caregiver, community agencies dedicated to serving people with dementia, and other concerned residents. 
They brought a wealth of experience to the table, and two of the strongest messages were that care caregivers need a significantly more respite programs, while programs and services for people living with dementia must accommodate the patient, not the other way around. I will deliver a fuller summary of the recommendations arriving from the, arising from the consultation to the Minister of Health later this week. Thank you. Thank you. So the, member is the, mon the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this week is Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week in Ontario schools, an opportunity to raise awareness of bullying and its impact on student learning and well-being. One of the most effective ways to do this is through the Pledge to End Bullying, an award-winning campaign to engage schools, families, organizations and businesses in making a verbal commitment to ending bullying behaviour. This community-wide initiative was launched in 2011 by CTV London and the Thames Valley District School Board under the leadership of former Director of Education Bill Tucker. The pledge recognizes that bullying is not just a school problem but a societal issue, and the entire community needs to take action to end it. On November 10th, I was proud to join with student and community leaders in London to, to repeat once again the simple yet powerful words of the pledge. I believe that everybody has the right to live in a community where they feel safe, included, valued, and accepted regardless of differences. I pledge to be respectful of others and to stand up against bullying whenever and wherever I see it. In the six years since the pledge was first launched, the campaign has spread to Kitchener, Barrie, Windsor, Kingston, Brockville, as well as Saskatoon and Winnipeg. Online, this year's campaign has collected close to 20, 267,000 signatures. If you haven't already done so, I encourage you to go to the pledge to end bullying.ca because all Ontarians should feel well Welcome and safe wherever they might be. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members statements. The member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, community Centre 55 is a cornerstone of the beach community in my riding of Beaches, East York. Its fantastic staff and volunteers provide programs and services year-round, enriching local lives. And this coming Sunday, Centre 55 is holding its annual Christmas parade. This year, our honorary chair is Penny Oleksiak, who is our four-time Olympic medalist in swimming from the recent Rio Olympic Games. I'll be parading with other leaders from our community. And the parade will raise money to send Christmas dinners and gifts to nearly 1,000 families and individuals who are in need in the riding, including their pets. Funds are raised through entry fees. The financial and food donations from the public are much well accepted. So the parade supports what they call their Share a Christmas Hamper program, and with the assistance of hundreds of volunteers, this initiative sorts and packs and delivers Christmas hampers across the riding. Every year we see schools and sports teams and families that come out to lend a hand. Volunteering in the program has become a tradition of many in the community. And the vital, char vital charitable program is completed in just five days between December 18th and December 22nd, bringing Christmas cheer and community spirit to those in our community who are most in need. Each hamper contains a Christmas dinner, extra non-perishables, clothes, household items, and pet-related items. Unfortunately, the number of applicants for assistance increases every year, but it is a testament to the strength of the community that it continues to meet the increased need and support every holiday season. I want to thank especially Debbie Visconti, Nancy Culver, and Chair of Centre 55, Leanne Rapley, for their incredible work in our community of Beaches East York. Thank, thank you, you, Speaker. I thank all members for their statements. It's